Hello Universe, Chapter 3, Help of a Different Nature. Gulliver was a good friend, guinea pig or not. Virgil could tell him anything and he wouldn't judge. And that's what Virgil needed. Only he also needed real practical guidance. He needed help of a different nature. Lola had once told Virgil a story about a woman named Dea Pan, who'd been hungry for seven years because she didn't know how to grow food. One day, Dea Pan wept because all she wanted was one grain of rice and one pea pod, anything to put in her belly. She took a bath in a spring to wash away her tears, and a great spirit appeared to her with armfuls of sugar cane and rice. The great spirit gave it all to Dea Pan and told her exactly what she needed to do to grow more. Dea Pan was never hungry again. Virgil wished that he had a great spirit that could tell him exactly what to do, but he only had Kaori Tanaka. Virgil fed Gulliver and texted Kaori as he walked down the hall for breakfast. Under normal circumstances, he wouldn't text someone at 7.45 in the morning, especially not on the first day of summer, but nothing about Kaori was normal. Besides, she always seemed to be awake. Need appointment this afternoon if that's okay. Virgil slipped his phone into the pocket of his pajamas and followed the unmistakable sounds of his parents and brothers, who were early risers because they seemed to have an endless string of soccer practices. In the kitchen, Mom, Dad, and the Jays were drinking orange juice and letting their personalities bubble over, while Virgil tried to maneuver through all the excitement so he could get a piece of fruit or boil an egg. Good morning, Virgilio, said Osilito. Good morning, Turtle, said his parents, almost in universe, in unison. Then Julius, my young boontag, little brother. Virgil grumbled something like, hello. His parents and brothers were sitting in the high back chairs at the counter. Lola was at the breakfast table reading the newspaper. Your mother bought too many clementines, so eat as many as you can, said Lola without looking up. Then she clucked her tongue at all the wastefulness. Virgil grabbed two clementines in each hand and tried hard not to drop them as he sat next to her. His phone buzzed in his pocket. What are you reading about, Lola? Virgil asked. He arranged the clementines in a perfect line in front of him, then checked his phone. I am available. Be here at noon. Sharp. Virgil laid the phone face down on the table next to the clementines. Death and destruction across the universe, said Lola. Godlessness around every corner. Julius craned his neck their way. Oh, Lola, don't be such a downer. Virgil had long suspected that his parents were crafted out of a factory that made perfect, athletic, perpetually happy children, and he was made from all the leftover parts. The only sign that something went wrong with Rosalito and Julius were their pinky fingers, which turned slightly inward. Virgil steadied his own hands as they worked away at the peel on the clementine. His fingers were long and slender. None of them turned inwards. Lola, do you know anything about hands? he asked. He glanced at Osolito and Julius, but they were busy talking about soccer. Their father had recently joined a grown-up soccer league. Everyone was wild about soccer, except Virgil. Lola set down her newspaper. I know that they have five fingers each most of the time. What do you mean, most of the time? Mm. I once knew a girl in my village who was born with an extra thumb. Really? What did they do with it? Did she go to the doctor and get it chopped off? No. Her family was poor. They couldn't afford a doctor. What did they do then? They kept the extra thumb. What else? Did she feel like a freak? Maybe. But I told her God must know something she didn't, and that's why he did it. Maybe he wanted her to be an excellent hitchhiker, Virgil said. Maybe. Or maybe she was like Ruby San Salvador. Who is Ruby San Salvador? Another girl from my village. She had seven sisters. Each time one of them was born, her parents had their fortunes read. But when they got to Ruby San Salvador, no one was able to see her future. Anytime someone tried, they just got a blank picture. No one knew what it meant. She walked around all the time saying, my destiny. What is my destiny? Finally, I said, no one knows, but you're driving us all crazy. Virgil thought of poor Ruby San Salvador, watching all her sisters get something that she couldn't have. What happened to her? Virgil asked. 
She left to go figure it out. The village got much quieter without all the questions. Lola narrowed her eyes at him. What's this about, Pitcher Leo? Of all the questions in the world you could ask, why are you asking about hands? I just noticed that all my fingers are nice and straight, don't you think? He set the clementine peels aside and put his hands on the table to show her. Lola nodded. Yeah, you have beautiful hands. You have the hands of a gifted pianist. We should put you in piano lessons. Lee, she called to Virgil's mother. Lee! Yes, Manine, said Virgil's mother, who was in the middle of laughing. She was always in the middle of laughing. How can we never put Virgilio in piano lessons? Ah, he has the hands of a pianist. But Virgil's father answered and said, Because boys need to play sports, not fool around on a silly piano. Right, Turtle? Virgil shoved half a clementine in his mouth. Mr. Salinas lifted his glass of orange juice. He just needs to put meat on his bones. Lola fixed her eyes on Virgil's hands and shook her head. Nice, she mumbled. You should play piano or not. You should play in Madison Square Garden with fingers like that. I have no doubt. Maybe I'll take lessons, Virgil said, his voice garbled from the flute. Yes, yes, good idea, good idea, said Lola. She shifted her face, her eyes to his face and studied it. You feeling better today, Annie? Virgil swallowed the clementine and nodded. Hmm, said Lola. How is that little pet of yours? He's okay. But last night I read online that guinea pigs aren't supposed to live alone because they're very social animals. So? Gulliver's alone. Is that what's bothering you? Gulliver had nothing to do with his grand failure, and normally Virgil wouldn't tell a lie. But this was a situation where saying yes would kill two birds with one stone. Or feed two birds with one seed, as Kaori liked to say. He might get another guinea pig, and Lola would stop asking about his sorrowful face. So he said, yes? Lola nodded. She didn't understand why anyone would want a pet guinea pig, but everyone knew what it was like to be lonely. Don't talk to your mother, she said.